Circular Reasoning is an abstract strategy game for two to four players where you're trying to get your three different shapes into the center of the board. Players will be moving their pieces onto the board and going in one specific direction that they choose. Other players will be hopping over there and the different shapes go the different distances and you're trying to get yourself through these gates to get to the next level. But watch out, each of these gates move each round depending on the amount of pieces on that level. You're trying to get these gates to line up with your pieces at the end of the round or as close to it so that you can move through them, but keeping in mind that people can block you from getting through gates on either side. Forward thinking, tactics, blocking, moving gates, lots to think about when you're trying to get all three in the middle to win circular reasoning. To set up, each player is going to pick a color and take the three shapes of that color. For example, triangle, square, and circle and place them in front of them. The colored ones you'll notice have some markings on them. Those are for colorblind players. If you're not playing with a colorblind player, you can simply change these by flipping them over. Any colors that are not used are removed and put in the box. They won't be used in the game. Next, unfold the board, place it in the middle of the table where everybody can reach it. At the top of the board, you'll see entry one, two, and three. You're going to take the green piece, that is the right length, and cover entry one, two, and three, as you see here. At the bottom of the board, you'll see player entrance. You'll place everyone's pieces outside of there to start the game. The object of the game is to be the first player to get all three of your pieces into the center of the board where it says circular reasoning, and you'll be moving your pieces closer to the middle as the game goes on. But first to get all three in the middle is the winner. You will decide who the start player is by any way you see fit, and you will give that player the player tracker. It looks like this circular reasoning chip. Each round goes through three phases. The first phase, players are going to be moving a piece of theirs on or around the board. Secondly, we'll be moving these gateways. And then thirdly, we'll be giving the player tracker to the next player. Let's go through each of these phases one at a time. Now in the movement phase, each player, when it's their turn, is going to move one of their pieces. Now the pieces move different amounts. The triangle, because it has three sides, will move three. The square, because it has four sides, will move four. And the circle moves two. When moving, once you decide whether to go clockwise or counterclockwise, you have to continue in that direction so you cannot change directions. So if I was taking this circle and I wanted to go two, I would go one, two, because I decided to continue to go this way. The next player might go up and say, one, two, three, because with the triangle, they decide to go this way. Now, if the green player decided to use the circle, he could have gone one and two. There can never be two pieces of any type, your own or otherwise, on the same spot on the board. So you actually hop over. So this would have been one, this would have been two. Now let's suppose that this piece was actually here. This circle could have gone one, two, or they could have gone one, and it jumps all the way over to the next open spot, and that would have been two. You can never go into the next level without going through a gateway, which we'll talk about in just a moment. After each player has moved once, the gateways will move. You'll look at each level, and for every piece that is on that level, the gate will always move clockwise. So in level one, there's three pieces, so this will go three clockwise. One, two, three. Level two and level three, there's none, so these would not move. If there were pieces there, they would always move clockwise, equal to the amount of pieces on that level. After the gateways have moved, we will move the player tracker. Remember, this was given to the start player in the first round. Everyone took turns clockwise, and then after the last player, this will go clockwise, and that player will start first, and everything will go clockwise, just like the previous rounds. Now let's talk about these gateways. Let's just say it was the red player's turn. This is going to move three spaces. Again, you can choose clockwise or counterclockwise, but you have to stay that direction. This can go three. So it would skip over this for one, two, three. It can go through this gateway, assuming that it's not blocked. We'll get to more on that in just a moment. Now let's say hypothetically, if instead of this uh, triangle, it was a square, the square moves four. And let's just say hypothetically, the other gate uh, gateway was there on two. This one could go one, two, three, four. You can go through more than one gate uh, in one turn. When moving through a gate, sometimes you'll have more moves left. You have to continue the movement in the direction that you started. In this case, let's say I was the red square and I'm gonna be moving counterclockwise. I can go four. So I would go one, two through this gate, three, four. I could do something like that. But let's just say this gateway was like this and my square was in the same spot. I would have to go one, two, 
three, four, for example. And that's how you move to and through gateways. Now, once you moved through a gateway, you can never move back out. So I couldn't have gone one, two, three. You can't, once you're through, you have to keep going and finishing your turn as normal. However, let's say your first move is to go through a gateway. In that case, when you do your first move at the square, I have three moves left. I can choose to go clockwise or counterclockwise because I haven't yet moved in either direction. Now there is blocking in this game where normally this person is trying to get through the gateway. If there is a piece on the front side of the gateway, you cannot move through it. Likewise, if there's a piece behind the gateway trying to get through it, you cannot go through it. And of course, if they're both there, you obviously cannot go through it. Now these could be opponents or it could be yourself. Maybe you are here and you're blocking yourself through there as well. In addition, you can be blocked from the player entrance. If there's a piece here, nobody from the outside could get in during the beginning of the game. Because the gateways move every round, uh, once for every chip that's on that level, you might want to move to a previous level. For example, this red piece might want to go one, two, for example, using all the movement rules earlier. However, if it's there and there's another piece here, then obviously it blocks it going backwards as well. Now, once you've made it into this, you can still move out if you'd like. So for example, if this gateway is here, I could move myself back out. But of course, once again, if it was blocked by somebody else, you cannot get out. And the first player to get their third piece into the center is the winner.